It just keeps going with you guys, huh? The line of natural predators rolls on in the strongest for every game series, as we go from ground last time to ice today. This is the second time now? You guys have lined up with my top 10 weakest series as well. So needless to say, it's interesting how you guys are working things out. If nothing else, this is proof that the content truly is in your hands. And I love being able to get you guys involved. Now, I will say this much though. We all know how much the ice typing is not good. It really sucked having to throw myself at this type for a second week in a row but at least we're not going over how bad they are and instead going through good ones. Now, I suppose it's time to get into things, but allow me to make a guess real quick. I bet you there will be a lot of repeating Pokemon in this video. I just have a hunch. We've got to start where we always do, right back in red, blue, and yellow. The option for red and blue is going to be Jinx, as you can get it a little earlier than Lapras, which is the only real options for ice types in the first gen. You need to head down to Fuchsia City and get the Good Rod, and then fish up a Poliwag, evolve it into Poliwhirl, and head back to Cerulean and trade for the Jinx. Then you'll have Jinx and its 95 special and speed ready to use against Giovanni, Koga, and other battles going forward. In fact, I actually have the Pokemon Red and Blue Best Team Remastered series all uploaded on Mystic Zora, with plenty of action from Jinx. So if you guys want to go watch those episodes, be sure to go check those out in the description below. But anywho, it's worth to have it against Sabrina as well, considering its special stat and psychic typing will help it take hits better than Lapras against her psychic types. Now, for Yellow, I'd probably have gone with Jinx again. However, you aren't actually able to acquire Jinx in Yellow without trading for it from Red and Blue. So, it's off the table, and by default, it's going to be Lapras. Lapras is definitely good on its own right, which I'm sure you'll remember from the water list. It's not as fast as Jinx, but it is as strong as it, and it can do well against Blaine, which Jinx lacks the ability to do so. So, despite the fact that Lapras is really an option of circumstance, it's justifiable outside of that. So, why not move into Gold and Silver, where we're going to talk about these two Pokemon again. As a matter of fact, for Gold and Silver, the pick is Lapras, and for Crystal, it is Jinx. So, in Gold and Silver, it's because you just can't get Jinx in those games until way late in the Ice Path, which is right before you face Claire. However, for Lapras, you can get it right after your fourth badge, as you'll be able to surf in Union Cave and find one. However, you will have to wait until Friday night. You'll be able to give Jasmine the business with a Lapras, and of course, Claire's Dragon types aside from Rakindra. And those ice moves come up big against Lance when you get to the Champions battle. Now, as for Crystal, you can get Smoochum before you reach Goldenrod. So that's way earlier than Lapras. You will have confusion on your Smoochum for the battle with Morty, and if you're a little overleveled, you'll even have a Jinx. And then it can put in the work against Chuck, it can beat down some of Claire's Pokemon, and of course, parts of the Elite Four. But I definitely would be careful against Morty. It helps that Jinx outspeeds and is stronger than Lapras too. You might be stuck with Confusion and Blizzard until you get to Kanto, but it's no real sacrifice. Jinx is still the best option of the Ice types for this enhanced Johto. So for Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, this one was pretty rough. Like, the only Ice type Pokemon available are around the 7th gym much like with the first two gens having most of their ice types only available late. These games offer only Walrein and Glalie's options, two that aren't exactly amazing. However, I'll be offering up an answer that might seem unconventional. The best ice type to use is Regice. You do have to jump through a few hoops, getting Relicanth and Wailord to unlock the chambers, and then heading out to catch it, but really, it's a much better Pokemon than the other two options, and it really isn't all that much later. I'd suggest obviously just playing through Hoenn without an Ice type, but if you must, this is a great option. I don't know if it'll be the same for Oras with Mega Glalie being a thing, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We move on now to Fire Red and Leaf Green, and once again, I'd say the top pick here is Jinx. It's for the same reasons as Red and Blue, so I won't bother getting too much into it. It's stronger than Lapras, faster, and it just works. There's nothing else to say. All right, we move on to the fourth generation now, and we have separate Pokemon for Diamond and Pearl, and then Platinum. So with Diamond and Pearl, the choice I made was Weavile. We all know Weavile as being a speedy and strong glass cannon. And we also all know that once again in a Pokemon game, most ice types are in the late game. You'll find Sneasel right outside Snowpoint City, which houses the seventh gym. And you'll need to level it up at night while holding the Razor Claw. Weavile 
has base 120 attack and 125 speed, which will make it all the better against, uh, I guess the ground types in the Elite Four? I know that Lucian uses psychic types, so the dark moves will help with that, and of course Cynthia's Garchomp is also easily beaten by ice type moves. Really, no ice type is going to help you much that late, but it's alright. As for Platinum, Weavile was an option again for this game, but it's not what I went with. Instead, I went with the Superior Mamoswine. You can get Swinub on Route 217, and at level 33, it becomes a Pile of Swine. You'll have to head to Pastoria City to use the Movery Learner and get access to Ancient Power, and then boom, it's Mamoswine. That thing will bring Ground-type moves to battle with Volkner, and then it can beat down the same Pokémon Weavile can, sans the Dark-type coverage. Mamoswine is stronger though, and can take hits much better. So yeah, it's a top tier option. Did someone say Lapras again? No? Well, I did. And it's the option for Heart Gold and Soul Silver. As you might have guessed, considering it was the one for Gold and Silver. It's a similar situation, as Jinx isn't available until late in the games, while Lapras can still be grabbed at the same time. So, you already know it. And Jinx also just isn't as good as it was in Gens 2 and Gen 3. In my opinion, anyway. I looked into Mamoswine, but again, it's just too late in the game. I don't get why Game Freak designs the ice-type snowy areas in their games to be so late, as this isn't the last time this will be the case by any means. It really gives me a new appreciation for Sword and Shield, having random weather in the wild area so tons of Pokemon are available early. I will give it that. Alright, with Black and White and Black and White 2, I definitely had a ton of different options but I came up with one Pokemon across both releases of the fifth generation that checked off all the boxes and made the most sense, Beartick. In the first releases, it's a better option all around than Vanillux and Cryagonal. Beartick is strong. It can be found in Twist Mountain, so not super late, and its move pool is a lot nicer than the other two. You'll get a lot more out of Beartick as an ice type than most. But then, when we look at Black 2 and White 2, it got a bit more interesting since there were some older options added in. But none of them ended up being better than just using Bear Tick either, as Mamoswine isn't an option due to Pile of Swine being found in the Giant Chasm, and it's the same deal with Weavile. Lapras is too late into things, and it's all just a shame because these Pokemon are better than Bear Tick, but not better enough to be worth waiting that long for. So yeah, for Unova, use Bear Tick. It's the wave here. So, Frost Cavern, guys. Far too late in X and Y. It really is. It's right before the seventh gym. You go through so much before that. So all the ice options are there with the exception of a small section. And uh, you guys already know Aurora sucks. So we've got to go back to old reliable once again and use Lapras. You are given a Lapras after you deal with the events in Shellar City. And that's right after your third gym badge. It's got access to all the good ice and water moves. And of course, you'll be able to do well against certain major battles and you'll get your Surfer with Lapras as well. If you have a better idea for X and Y, let me know, but I don't see it being better than Lapras. So, I talked about it earlier, and for Auras, it's either Mega Glalie or Regice. I'll be straight up, I think it's Regice again. However, if you think Glalie and its Mega are more worth it to use and provide a stronger option, then that's fine. I want you guys to decide on this one and let me know in the comments down below. Honestly, it's a toss-up. Glalie is definitely fast and strong, but defensively and as a special attacker, Regice is tremendous. It's an in-game playthrough perspective that we're looking at, so I can see Glalie being better in the eyes of many of you. So, like I said, please let me know what you think. So, man, Sun and Moon made the decision for me. I couldn't pick essentially any of the ice types worth using, considering all are found in Sun and Moon's version of Victory Road. So, by then, the game is practically over. I decided the way to take things is to split this up to the two Alolan form exclusives, being Sandshrew in Moon and Vulpix in Sun. Both are good Pokémon in their own right, but the edge definitely goes to Alolan Ninetales. I can't see an argument being made to wait until the end of the game for an Ice type, so it'll just be default either of them. I don't even need to really say anything else, as they are already sold. So, let's just move on to the Ultra games. These games definitely offer a bit more in the realm of possibilities for ice types, since the bottom of Mount Lanakilla now has some snow. There are a lot of options now, but the one I'm going with will surprise you. It's Jinx. That's right, it's Jinx. 
and it all lies in the fact that you can get it right at the start of the game. Smoochum is available to be captured in Seaward Cave. And then by level 30, you have Jinx. So the majority of the game, you'll have a useful and strong ice type that is very successful. I feel it's worth using that over waiting until the third island to finally pull in an ice type, quite frankly. Honestly, outside of earlier access to Crabominable or Snorance evolutions, the only other options are Sandshrew and Vulpix again, depending on the version you're playing. I do think Jinx is the best option even still. And that's my final answer for the Ultra games. All right, so for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, I'll make this a quick one. It's Lapras, again. As always, it's gotten in the Sylph Co. And it's much sooner than all the other ice types that you need to get in the Seafoam Islands. It's just that simple, folks. Finally, we're gonna wrap this up with our most recent releases, Sword and Shield. I know you guys want me to offer you DLC and non-DLC options. And as it worked out this time around, my picks are available whether you have the DLC or not. That's right, I said picks, as one of the options is a version exclusive. If you're playing Pokemon Sword, well, there's no denying whether you get it later or not, Galarian Darmanitan is the only Pokemon I can think of that is worth waiting that long for that can still be considered the best of its typing. We all know about how good both the Zen Mode is on this thing, as well as how great Gorilla Tactics is as an ability. I don't feel as though I need to sell this any more than with what I said. As for Shield, it's gonna be Mammoth Swine. You can get Swine Up right in the wild area wherever there is hail, and you can easily use a mover learner to get ancient power onto it, meaning you'll get Mammoth Swine after not too long. It's got a lot to offer in Galar, and that's about it. Strong ice and ground type moves will help you tear up the entire region, believe me. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Another strongest typing video from the drain. And you know what that means, you've gotta pick our next typing. Let me know what you guys wanna see next. Oh, and uh, while you're at it, Karate chop that like button, subscribe, and share your thoughts on this list. I'd love to know what you guys think for sure. So with that said, thank you to everyone for watching the video. Huge thanks to my phenomenal team and the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all this without them. If you all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, as it really helps us out. I also do other content on my Twitch, where I stream Genshin Impact, Mystic Zora, where I do Pokemon Let's Plays and other gaming content, and of course Mystic Sage, where I do all anime content. Right now, I'm focusing on Inuyasha and Yashihime, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. If you'd like to support me even further than that, check out my Patreon. Whether it's a dollar tip to get early thumbnail access, or the $10 tier to get cool perler bead charms and a shout out. There's tons of reasons to join today. These lovely people did, and I thank them all so much for their support. It really means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrion, and I will see you all next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.